Okay, it's 6 p.m. and we'll call this uh, meeting of the Public Works and Highway Committee to order. Roll call shows um, everyone is here except for Phil, who we anticipate is on his way. Um, I will entertain approval of the minutes from January 4th. I move to that effect. Second. Any comments or changes to the minutes? None will vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Public comment. I don't see anybody that doesn't work for the village in the audience. Is there anybody online that we can see? Nobody online. Nobody's online? Okay, then we'll move on to new business. New business A, recycling center, wheel loader, bid tab. So if you recall last month, um, you guys gave me authorization to spend up to the budgeted amount to get a wheel loader for the recycling center um, due to the unprecedented purchasing times we're in. And I said I would bring back that bid tab. So presented for you tonight is the bid tab for that wheel loader. Our bids range from 233,500 to a low bid of 165,816. And we went with the 2021 wheel loader that Kelby had in stock for the $165,816. Um, that machine has been delivered. It is at Public Works. We're, wait, we're gonna be waiting on the, the material handling forks and we're gonna be waiting on the rear fenders for that machine. So when those come in, they'll be installed, but it was all part of the package. And then bringing this forward for informational purposes. Okay, thank you, Tim. In stock hear that much anymore. that's why we that's why we <laughs> grabbed it so sure <laughs> okay moving on to b follow up to the request for the public works committee for the starlight water tower buckthorn removal project good evening um he said that i said He's, he should be here he said he would come but i never said he had to be here so yeah i would just go ahead and yeah it's not necessary for him to be here Thank you. Sorry. Uh, we asked, we are estimating a cost of 25,000 for the last two phases, which consist of regrading topsoil and mulch along with uh, replanting trees in the approved budget. Under account 50, 742, 530, 67, 10 maintenance of structures. There is an account balance of $30,000. There's also funds in account 50, 742, 530, 67. 720 maintenance of distribution reservoirs in the amount of six hundred and eighty thousand dollars also attached are the current photos showing what was done on phases one and two who's doing the work again paul you no no it's um Contract service. I can't even think of the name right now. I can't remember. And the new, new, new leaf tree service, I believe. And they have to do the second phase two, or is that something we can do in house? No, phases one and two are completed. Phases three and four will be what I. Uh, the, let's say the the one I'm looking at here. The last two phases, regrading topsoil and mulch, is that something we can do in house and save some money? Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty extensive project. I think with. What we've got currently with our workload, I, I would really prefer that we do it by contract service. Okay, so tonight you're looking for approval of phases three and four? Correct. And the money you already have with the account that the money is coming from. Mm -hmm. And we know that we have a great savings in sewer department that we can, $59,000. Um, anyway, committee? I'll make this three and four. I'll second it. Any more comments, discussion? No, I think it looks good so far. I'm sure the, the uh, residents are happy. We've got uh, quite a bit of positive feedback from those um, that are affected by this project. Any other comments? We'll vote all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. 
repair bill for broken fire hydrant. On August 8th, 2021, a motor vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed veered off the road and snapped the fire hydrant standpipe below grade, rendering the hydrant non-operable. Materials were ordered for the replacement and due to the supply chain delays, we did not take receipt of the required berry depth hydrant until uh, early December, 2021. This is a pass-through cost to the owner driver of the motor vehicle. <clears throat> So their insurance is definitely going to pay for this, Paul? We, yes, this is um, this kind of a reoccurring thing. Okay, so yes. he has insurance. and They do have insurance, yes. Okay. I've already filed a claim with the insurance company, so they're, they, they know it's coming. Okay. Maybe not the total yet, but they do know it's coming. It's cheaper than fixing a car. <laughs> um, committee? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the repair bill for the broken fire hydrant on Washington Drive. I'll second. More discussion, comments? We'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, moving on to 24-hour vehicle use for the utility foreman position. Okay, the Village Water Utility requests authorizing the 24-7 hour use of a work vehicle for the water utility foreman position. This request is due to the job description moving from an hourly non-exempt position to a salaried exempt position, which requires 24-7 response. The village employee manual does not identify this position to allow for vehicular use. Also, this request is to be, is to be consistent with the DPW foreman position that was recently changed as well. Um, where does the last line mean again? Also, this request is to be consistent with? Uh, the DPW foreman position uh, was changed to a salary position. Right. And that was also allowed, that position was allowed to take the vehicle home for 24 hour um, uh, who is response. that person? Um, uh, Peter. And that is in, uh, that's under Scott? Yes. So is this just something that? I wasn't aware that he was allowed to take a vehicle home. But did we approve that? Mm -hmm. And I just don't remember. Yeah. I remember approving his salary position, but the vehicle part, I, I don't recall, frankly. The um, uh, Peter Leidner uh, filled Scott Anderson's position, and Scott Anderson's position was included in the policy as being allowed to take the, the vehicle home. So, um, and, and that goes back to the history when there were two superintendents. Um, so there the were parks and rec, and then yeah. correct. And there were the, the policy had allowed basically both of those positions to take home a vehicle. And the, as the foreman, when Scott was a foreman, he took the vehicle home uh, when Peter moved into that position. The, the it went current, along with the position. The, the went along so with we the did position. not specifically talk about that. Correct, correct. I, I would have remembered right, that. Right, it did not come to the committee because it was already okay. in the policy that, that allowed that. And this is not in the This policy. one is not. This is um, a new, this position was reclassified as a new position um, uh, at the last village board meeting. Um, and then when we went through the process of, of filling the new position was created, the request came forward about the vehicle, um, but the current policy does not include this position. It's, it's parallel, it's analogous to, to the, the foreman position under, under Scott. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a very similar position. Um, you know, the same rationale, I believe, applies that this is a salaried position that's expected to respond in emergency situations. Um, and uh, so the, I think the same rationale that allows the foreman um, under Scott's area to take the vehicle home would, um, would apply to, to this position. Paul, you're a first responder, right? Is there a problem with water? I'm one of them. Meaning call you first? Or now, well, you... now, now it's going to be the foreman position, but I still, I mean, we're, we're all part of the team. So when the, when the alarm goes off, we respond. Maybe any other comments? Or questions or... How many, how, um, Steve, how many instances do we have of this though? You know, employees, I'm sorry to bring you back up there. Um, there, there are a handful of, of position or positions that are allowed to do this. Um, the police chief, the fire chief, 
uh, the uh, three DPW superintendents, um, and then the uh, the foreman under uh, highways, buildings, and grounds, um, and then this this would be what is that? Uh, f uh, five, uh, six positions. This would be the the seventh position. So, and it is one of the one of the things that I I look to this actually. I had a um, one of my former students, who's now a village administrator, asked me this question last week, and I just went back and looked at, like, for example, the IRS guidelines on what they say. And there's actually a specific section that relates to public employees, and this isn't binding for for villages, but it's just for tax purposes that um, it's not considered compensation if. You look at the the style or the type of truck if it's modified so that it wouldn't typically be used for personal use. Um, it wouldn't be amenable for personal use, and the policy has to say it can't be for personal use, um, which our policy says. Uh, but it includes like the equipment or tools or things like that that would allow the individual to respond directly to an emergency situation. So that's um, it, it's not many positions, and and I don't think it should be expanded. Um, and again, the intent is not that it, it's not that it's a benefit to the employees who are doing this. It's it's so that if they're, you know, if and when an emergency comes up that they're able to respond directly to the site. Thank you. Sure. If if I remember this topic, this topic's been kind of on and off for a number of years, probably since I've been on the board. And if I remember, there was you you took the vehicles home for a while, or some people took them home. Then they there was some type of policy that was changed where if they left them there, then they could get an increase in their pay. And then if you you know, so I don't know what the policy is anymore. Well, so there there was a change that was made. I don't know, maybe five six years ago. It was I think. Before I started, um, uh, the village was trying to address um, compensation for the superintendents. And um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, I, I, don't, I don't remember and I don't know how important all the details are, but there was a trade-off that was made. I think right. the, the vehicle take-home was looked at as a benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a trade-off that said, all right, if you give up the vehicles, we will, um, uh, we will give you a pay increase. There was a bump, right. And I think that was, was a, a, a trade-off that was made. I, and, I, and I actually think, um, if, again, if you look at like the IRS guidelines on this, it, what was done, um, it really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me that it, if the purpose of the vehicles is to respond to emergencies if you're not allowed to use them for personal use um, if they're equipped with the equipment and stuff that you need in those emergency type situations then it, it's not again it, it should not be looked at as a benefit to the employees it's something that the village is asking people to do to be able to do their jobs um, and um, again i think it was i think it was a trade-off to try to get agreement um from from some of the board some of the trustees to um uh, to go ahead with that that pay increase so my recommendation to the board would be either if if we feel this is important for emergency responses we should have the people take the vehicles home so they're able to to, to respond and we should enforce the guidelines and, and and we are enforcing that they're not to be used for any personal use um if we don't feel that's important, then um, then then uh, then they shouldn't be taking the, the vehicles home. But I don't think it should be. I don't think it should have been connected to that compensation to that pay pay bump. Um, could you state again who the people are that have the vehicles now? Scott, Tim, Paul. Yes, the uh, Mike Snow, John Delane, Fire Chief, Police Chief, yep, and Peter Leidner. And Peter is the uh, foreman under foreman. Scott. Okay, and now the foreman, even that. That's why I'm I'm just still surprised that, that Peter has a car or, or a vehicle because I don't remember that. Obviously, it's part of the package, and I get it. But we don't have that structure anymore, do we? Where when Scott first got his vehicle? Um, well, uh, 
I can't. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. I, I don't know what position Scott was in. I think Scott was in the foreman position, yeah. and was taking the the vehicle home. Okay. Um, Who's the first responder? Um, would it be Peter or Scott? Yeah. Okay. That I, I can almost understand. Who's your first responder? You said this foreman would be here for. I we similar to Scott's situation. Yeah. It depends on the situation. Who um, lives in Germantown? Neither of us. Neither. Of us. Okay. So a far away first responder. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this should be revisited by the board. I'm going to ask, no matter how we vote on this tonight that this not be placed on the consent agenda so other people can weigh in on this and we can figure out what our policy actually is. Okay. Uh, any more comments or? No, I, I think that, I think that makes sense to have the whole board uh, kick at it. Yeah, but we'll vote on it and we'll see, see how it turns out. Um, if there's no more comments, we will vote all in favor of. Uh, Wait, I don't think we have a motion. Oh, to want some and state the motion in such a way that we're not just killing this. Right, I'll make a motion to move this ahead to the village board with, uh, what do they say, with a positive recommendation. Right, I'll second that. Okay, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, okay. Uh, two to one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, uh, tar and mastic purchase. I like the word mastic. Good evening, everyone. Uh, each year, DPW staff self performs uh, tarring operations in house. Um, last couple of years, we've been working with engineering um, on the seal coating project and various roads around the village. Um, and we, we, we typically have bought the Craftco Asphalt Rubber, uh, rubber Plus. Um, and then we would always do something uh, through a contractor infrared heating around manholes. Um, and so we took a little bit of a closer look at a new product called Mastic One this last year. And um, we typically could get about 60 heats done around those manholes. We were actually able to do about 160 to 170 manholes by doing them in house with the with the Mastic One. Um, so this year, we're, we're going to buy the same amount of uh, tar material that we'll put down, and we're looking to buy the additional um, Mastic One. These are both items that are within our maintenance budget. And what I didn't add is that we'd be looking to purchase these through Sherwin Industries, which is our local rep. But we're looking to spend about $30,507.75 on that material. Is that the only place it could be purchased from, Scott? You don't need bids on this? They are the, they are the big supplier in our area, yes. Is there another supplier? I, uh, Trustee Kaminsky, I don't know the answer to that question, to be honest. And, and moving forward, if we want to look, they've been supplying the village with this material for Forever? decades. Okay. Yep. Committee? Make a motion to approve the uh, purchase of the asphalt rubber and mastic one, not to exceed $30,507.75. I'll second that. Any more comments or discussion? A vote all in favor aye. aye opposed it's unanimous thank you okay um stand on spray spreader purchase try to say that one 10 times fast huh okay. try to say it once right <laughs> um every year we again go out in-house and we spray broadleaf and put granular application down on our buildings and grounds and along our uh, manicured thoroughfares like mequon road appleton avenue um, and we do that work in house. There is a combination of in house work and contracted work, uh, ball diamond maintenance, and some park maintenance is done under a contract. Um, but when we do this work in house, we're using two pieces of equipment, which isn't necessarily effective uh, or um, time management wise. And these pieces of equipment that we're using are, are very old and uh, pretty much at the end of their service life. So as part of the 2022 budget, we did budget for a stand on spray spreader, which we will be able to use one person uh, in one application and apply both broadleaf and granular as needed. And so we're looking to, uh, we went out for a couple proposals here and we're looking to purchase that uh, steel green SG 52 from Walt Schmitz town and country in an amount not to exceed $14,950. 
I will move for the uh, approval of the uh, steel green and on sprayer from Walshmitz Town and Country in the amount not to exceed fourteen thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. Second. More discussion on that. It's in the budget. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. This is yours too, Scott. Twenty twenty two center and edge line striping. Yes. Again, an annual thing we do, uh, we work with Washington County on painting our center and edge line striping uh, throughout the village. There are some roads that we do every year and then we do an even and an odd. Um, last year, bringing this to the committee, there was a question about uh, pricing from other places. So we did reach out actually um, to uh, Crawley Construction and we found out that the county's given us a great price. Uh, they give us a price of $7 a foot comparison uh, to Crawley at 20 cents a foot. So we're getting a very nice value from the uh, from the county. Um, the price this year is about $1,100 a mile. And uh, if you total up the number of miles this year, we'll be looking to spend approximately $50,000 in center and edge line striping. That is part of the annual maintenance budget. Ready? Motion to approve the uh Item for Washington County to paint the center line striping as needed on the village thoroughfares for approximately one uh, fifty thousand dollars. Oh, I will second that. Questions or discussion? Every none will vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. And then the GIS tree inventory project. Yeah, we've discussed this a uh, number of times. You may remember that back in. Uh, October of last year, we talked about applying for a grant, which we made a commitment to do, and that was part of the 2022 budget. Uh, this is the, uh, and, and then I, I brought to this uh, committee last month that we were awarded that grant. Um, there's a 50% reimbursement upon completion of the items that we need to complete. Um, and one of those is our GIS update. That's the largest portion of this. Um, <clears throat> And so we're looking to bring that forward for official approval with the committee tonight. Um, total for that would be uh, $22,000 with a 50% reimbursement. Uh, again, once that's complete. Um, as a quick aside, there, there were again a few other things. There's a public engagement. Uh, there's some training and tree felling and trimming. And um, those things all have to be completed and submitted one at one time for the reimbursement. So we've, we've got that plan in place uh, and we're working through that, but this is just the largest step of it where we're looking to get this approved here tonight. Remind us how often we have to do the uh, inventory. You know, they recommend that we do this every five to seven years. And I think it's been about 15 or 18, if I'm remembering correctly, since the last time we did it. And do they tell us like all the different types of trees we have or what what's included in the inventory? Yeah, so actually it's it's a layer on our GIS system. And when you open the layer, um, it's it's not every tree in the village, but the areas where yeah. we've done it, you see the population come up, you can click on a tree, you can see its size, the diameter of the trunk. Uh, there's all kinds of notation for uh, treatment of emerald ash borer. This is huge for the treatment of emerald ash borer when we bring that forward. Um, it's giving you information about trimming that needs to be done. The last time it was trimmed, um, it's keeping a rating or a condition of the tree um, for yeah. removal and replacement. And that Especially kind of stuff. with all the new ones to keep track of. Yep. Times. And, and that is another thing is we remove a tree, it becomes um, a vacant planting site. And so then again, mm -hmm. next month, we're going to bring in the spring tree, plant, uh, tree planting. And so we're using that layer right now to kind of see what's vacant around around the village. Are we still treating a lot of trees or they mostly died at this point? No, actually we've had a really, really good success rate. Um, that's gonna be probably ongoing for a while, but we're still treating a lot of ash trees. Again, that's that's semi-annually. So there's again, a system set up in place. Again, Wachtel has just been huge in helping us put that all together and keep that moving. But we're having very good success in keeping the ash population alive. Me? I would move that we uh, use Wachtel tree science to complete the GIS tree layer update um, in the amount not to exceed $22,000. Second. More discussion. 
A vote all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Okay, Larry, moving on to you. Final payment for well number 12. Nope. There's one before that. Change order number one. Oh, I'm Letter sorry. Um, how did I get that far ahead? Oh, yes. Change order number one. Install water main at booster station site. The remaining water main extended into the booster station building was to be bid with the building uh, building bid. The previous booster station bid included this water main extension, but the bid was rejected due to the uh, over budget in 2020. The bid included a water main item at $41,000. Uh, with the Holy Hill project went on, I requested an RFP from the contractor doing that project, and um, the bid that I received for that was $27,300. It was estimated that the bid of $41,000 received in 2020 at today's prices would have increased to near $50,000 with the increase in materials and labor. A uh, bit more explanation for this. Um, back in, when we were building the Holy Hill area, we um, identified a booster station, brought the property, and we installed an auxiliary pump for fire flows to, to the Holy Hill area. At that point, we extended the water main to the building only 20 feet um, of, of pipe length. We didn't go into the building at that time because there wasn't enough detail of the building site. Oh, that has changed, and um, I took advantage of uh, this contract is low price. They were just looking for work. Their equipment was here, and um, we already had the rock blasted when we did the original, the original construction. So this was a very opportune time to get a very good price to extend the water main into the booster station building. Um, I know you'll ask. The booster station is still on hold until the tower height and everything else is resolved because that affects the pump sizes. So this waits for. Can we no, this has been extended. This work has been done. This doesn't change this pipe. This has been done. It's sticking up by the ground, ready for the building to go to be built. Make Great. a motion to approve change order one for the uh, water main and booster station site. I will second that. More discussion or question? None. We'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Now, moving on to final payment for well number 12. Well, number 12 has been completed and the village has re has uh, received a request for final payment from the contractor in the amount of $79,379.81. The contract amount was $369,523, um, but was adjusted uh, by three change orders, having a net total of $109,458, increased in the final contract amount to $478,981.20. The three change orders were approved by the Public Works Committee and High Public Works and Highway Committee and the Village Board. As discussed during the change order approvals, the additional cost was due to increase testing required to determine if this well could be a shallow well and an increased casement sealant of concrete um, per the DNR requirement um, to seal the dolomite rock to ensure separation of the upper and lower aquifers. We're looking for acceptance of the, of the work and um, um, approval to make the final payment. And the work you said is all correct and it's, done well. It's done and all perfect. accepted and passed. The testing yeah. has been done and it's just awaiting the building now. Well, number 12 is located. It's, it's the new well on Rockfield and Gateway Crossing. Okay. Right next to Tower 4. Um, I would move to. Uh, Approve the final payment for well number 12 in the amount of $79,379.81. and 81 cents. Second. Questions about this? Vote all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, moving on to new business reduction of the letter of credit for Kinderberg Estate Subdivision. The Breeding Homes developer of Kinderberg Estate Subdivision has requested a reduction to the letter of credit. Um, this is the first reduction request. The current value of the letter of credit is $1,226,999. And the developer is requesting a reduction in the amount of $1,101,999, leaving a remaining amount of $125,000. The majority of public improvements um, have been completed and accepted. Asphalt surface pavement, minor curb and gutter replacement, and minor punch list items are still remaining. Looking at the values of um, the, the, in the development agreement for the remaining work, 
of the um, surface course and approximating how much curb and gutter we feel they're going to have to replace out there when we when we walk it and, and uh, do the punch list items. Um, I feel that $125,000 is more than enough to cover um, the remaining work to be completed. This is on country air, correct? For anybody watching this, this is Viridian. No, the Kinderberg Estates is off of Dungeons Bay, like Kinderberg Park, like Kinderberg. Okay, then. Oh, the controversial one. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve the reduction uh, and retain the remaining amount of one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I will second that. Comments or questions? Vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. We'll wait to agreeable. Okay, moving on to projects update. Did anybody uh, on the committee see anything that uh, you have questions about or want to ask Larry about? Just the, um, my wife keeps asking me when the stop signs are going in on um, Maple and Christad. I know they're there. When is the hookup? Is they going to be the little midget ones or, or the maple and fry stand? The no, light, the, um, the traffic lights. Traffic lights. Traffic lights. Yeah. They will be operational Thursday. The little the little morning. lights. Little lights. This Thursday. Oh, that's full there's, lighting. No, there's going to be tra there's going to be full traffic signal intersection maple and fry stand. Okay, but when I drive past there every day, I see the big metal poles on the ground that would look like that they should be over the road, right? And maybe they will be. And I see these little mini. Yeah. Light stanchions on each corner. So what's been happening is they've been getting materials in um, kind of piecemeal. And I think as they were getting materials in, they were just installing some of the materials out there to um, pass, pacify that okay. some work is being done. It could be miniature lights. Well, cute. We were just notified this morning that the, rem the remainder of materials have been received. Yeah. And um, by Thursday, Mid morning, they're saying the intersection will be operational. Wow! It'll it'll run on four way red flash for a, a week or two, mm -hmm. and then go to full operation. Awesome. Anything else we want to pull out of here and ask about? What what um? I probably should know the answer to this. CIPP project that's kind of doing what right now? Uh, um, it's in the um, stages of trying to get approvals for some some easements um, to cross um, waste management's property for bypass pumping, and we're working with MMSD and the DOT uh, to gain access to um, again with the bypass pumping to gain access to go through a culvert for the DOT and an outfall location for the sewage for MMSD. And I have one final question under private development. Um, how, how is the Murphy Pet Foods facility? Have you been out there? Have you seen? Yep, the water, water main is probably, I'm going to say, um, 75% complete. Um, walls are supposed to start going up, I believe, this coming Monday, the 7th. And um, along with that, Capstone, is, their walls are going to start going up on the 14th. So you're going to see both buildings, Murphy's, Murphy Pet Foods and Capstone buildings. Um, you're starting to start seeing some walls out there this month. Okay. Anything else? Anybody wants to pull out or ask questions? No? Okay, then um, we'll set a next meeting date. Uh, the Tuesday would be March 1st. First. Does that work for everyone? 6 o'clock? Okay, then that's, that's what it'll be at 6 p.m. And I don't think any of us have any announcements, I presume. So we will adjourn at 6.33 p.m. Thank you, everyone.